Hey guys, welcome to one of the best looking cars of all times. This is a BMW Z8. This one is a 2002 and I gotta say it does not look like it's 20 years old. So here we are, BMW Z8. This is the regular Z8, not the Alpina version. They made about 5,700 of these cars. Come with a 4.9 liter V8 from the E39 M5 with 400 horsepower. This car was made as a tribute to the old BMW 507 and it kind of carries the lines back from that car but kind of in a modern version. So one of my favorite things about the interior of the Z8 is just how unique it is. There's no other car that really looks like that. So you have this very simple steering wheel with these little lines coming across it. No buns, no nothing on the steering wheel. And if you notice, the middle of the steering wheel and the dash are actually the exact same color as the body of the car. So if you were to get a black car, these will be black. If you were to get a red car, these will be red. So it's really cool little feature that, you know, you don't really get with a lot of cars. Now, one of the biggest differences between this car and let's say an Alpina car, we that this car comes with a six speed manual, whereas the Alpina car comes with an automatic. So this one's a little bit more engaging, a little bit more fun realistically than the Alpina, just more common. But I think overall, this is the better car. But there's a lot more to know about how the car drives, just what it is overall. So I've been driving it all weekend and now we're gonna go for a drive and I'm gonna tell you all about it. Okay, so here we are, the BMW Z8. So up until recently, this was a car that I didn't, like I knew a lot about it. I never really got up close to one. I didn't really even think it's gonna be a chance that I might drive one. And then about two months ago, when I had the Mercedes SLS, I met a guy that had a black one of these. And within 30 minutes of meeting him, you know, he really liked the SLS, we started talking cars, and he actually let me try out his Z8 on the highway. Now, this went from a car that, you know, I knew the stats about, I knew, you know, engine figures, whatever, but I never really thought about what the drive experience would be like. You know, I kind of thought about this as almost like, you know, a Mercedes SL competitor, but with a cooler looking body and, you know, a little bit more rare. Now, once I drove it, immediately the first feeling I got is that this might be the best built car I have ever driven in my life, and I've driven pretty much every modern Rolls Royce. The, and again, I don't know if what I'm saying is true, but that's just what the car feels like. The best way to describe it is it's just very solid. It's everything feels heavy, but not in a bad way where it's like, you know, slow and sluggish. Like, it just feels heavy as in like, it's planted, they didn't cheap out on any materials on this car. It just feels so incredibly well built. And I've never felt anything like that from any other brand. And you know, you think German car brands and you think high build quality, this is the definition of that. And I bet when these companies were making cars back in the 60s and 70s compared to the cars that were being made at the time, that's what the cars felt like. And that's why those cars are so viable today. So as a heritage car to you know, the BMW 507, it is nice to see that they kept this car, you know, levels above everything else when it comes to build quality. And you really, you do see where where the money comes from, like what you pay for, you get it. You get, they don't cheap out on anything. There, there isn't really any like loose plastic anywhere. Leather all the way up to here. Everything is just very high quality materials, leather everywhere. Even the dash is body colored. So match to whatever paint you selected on the car. That's what you're going to get as kind of the trim. So down here, up here, around the gauges, just everywhere. But now we start talking about the driving experience because like I said, the car is very heavy. But you know, this is not a sports car. This is just the ultimate cruiser. And you drive around it's like this. I'm not trying to go on the Nürburgring with something like this. I want to just go down country road, cruise with the top down, which obviously right now, I had to put the top up because if I put the top down, you won't really hear me too well. And I never drove the car actually with the top up up until now. And I'm actually surprised how quiet it is and how like insulated it is in here. I don't hear any outside noise. I thought because this is like, a, you know, it's not the primary roof on the car. When you bought the car, you also got a hard top. So I thought the soft top is not gonna be very good at all. I thought it just like, oh, in case you get caught in the rain. But this is, I don't know why you would ever put the hardtop on this, because this way you have a perfect roof, and if you ever want to take it off, you just touch the button right here, and you can take the top off and just get the convertible experience. Um, but it's just so quiet, so isolated. I mean, this is in the same level 
of luxury I'd say as a Rolls Royce but you do have a little bit more sportiness to it you know be a very good comparable to a Bentley maybe but obviously this has a way cooler more unique design than a Bentley it's more rare it just got the cool factor that you don't get it a Bentley and of course you also get a manual transmission in this one which you know can't really replace now speaking of the manual transmission that might be the one I don't want to say cheap thing or downfall of the car, but and I do know a lot of people do like it, so I know I'm gonna get some flack for this, but I think the transmission from all the M cars of this generation, it's not, I don't know if I want to say loose, but it, it just doesn't feel incredibly well built. I know a lot of people love them. Personally, I'm just not a fan, and I feel like for a car to just feel so solid, the fact that when I change gears, there's like such a long throw and there's like, it just doesn't feel as solid as the rest of the car. Now, I wouldn't get an automatic instead of it because I feel like at least this way, I, I do still have some driver involvement and it's not the worst manual. But, you know, like I said before, the Alpinas came in an automatic only and I do kind of see why someone might want to get an Alpina because it just, you know, if you just buy this as a cruiser, so, you know, road trip car whatever the automatic would probably be very nice with this car it'll feel more it'll feel like it belongs a little bit more but yet again when you drive this you do still want the driver involvement so i don't know if i would necessarily pick the automatic but it's just not the best manual in my opinion now even though i talked a lot about build quality and all of that there was a known issue with these cars so I believe it was mainly caused because of the OEM tires. So this car was, I believe, the first car to ever come equipped with run-flat tires. And that was a part of the cause, but I don't think it was the full thing. It was also obviously the weight of the engine and everything on the front. That there was some chassis flex on the front and that caused the, the subframe to crack. And, you know, obviously if you had a big pothole, very good chance that that might happen. But to avoid that, a lot of Z8s, including this one, and even including the first one I drove that kind of made me fall in love with the car, got like a strut bar installed in the front, and that kind of prevents that issue. So if there is a fix for that big issue that the car does have. So other than that, I mean, they, they built this car so well, and I feel like nowadays there's so many different regulations, and they also try to cheap out and have budgets and have all that to kind of, doesn't allow them to build a car in this quality ever again. And I think because of that, this car is also going to just be looked back as a very special car. This car has always been appreciating. It came out at about 140, 150,000, I think, uh, in Canadian dollars. Now, this car in Canadian dollars, probably 300, 350. And, you know, I do think this car is worth that. I think you don't get the same driving experience in any other car. You know, you might look at like an SLS or something as a comparable, but an SLS is a lot more you know, new school type of technology. The inside is a lot more Mercedes than this is BMW. This is very different than any other BMW. So this is just a way more unique experience than you get really anywhere else. But, you know, you get a luxury car with a sport button here that when you press it, the car just completely changes. Throttle response, just gets so much more aggressive. The car just turns into a whole nother car. So once you press the sport mode, you just turn this thing from a well-built luxury car to a very, very, very well-built sporty Grand Tour that just has a V8 and a lot of power. And I know four and a quarter power nowadays doesn't sound like a lot, but I'm telling you, it's enough. And you know what? The transmission also feels better in the sport mode. I still, not the biggest fan of this transmission but man the car changes so much with the sport mode and you get a true sports car i wouldn't say it's like a mountain road type of sports car the car doesn't want to go into tight turns but you know curvy rolls highways all that this is what this car was built for this is i'd say like a cooler better sl 63 65 like it, it's something in that kind of level and you know there's no M in the name, but this is an M performance car for sure. Obviously, it has the M5 engine. And man, it is a great car. Oh, so easy to rev.
drug mod, so easy to drive, but it, you just feel so cool in this car. It feels so nice, and especially with the top down, it's a whole different experience. One thing that I had to really get used to in this car is the fact that the gauges are right here, they're not in front of you. And the first day or two that I drove the car, I honestly was really drifting to the right side of the car because I'm used to, you know, the gauges being in front of me, so that's kind of where the car should be. And it kind of threw me off, but after, you know, a few days of driving the car, I got really used to it and I really like it because you don't really think about the speed, you don't really think about the RPM, you just think about driving and feeling the car. And I think that's actually a lot more valuable, it's a lot, better you just you enjoy the car a lot more when you're not worried about all that and to be honest when i drive it i have no idea how fast i'm going i don't even know what the revs are at i just listen to the car i feel everything out and i just do everything by feel and it's never like messed me up at all and i've been enjoying it a lot more than i think if the gauges would have been here so i actually really do like that setup but again i'm not a bmw guy but i'm a big GT type of car guy, like Grand Tours. Um, I do like convertibles, depending on the car. I think with this car, the lines do really work on it. Um, but you know, I I really really like this car. I think it's it's a great like cruiser road trip car. Just even like a Sunday morning drive, it's a great car for that. I think this could be if I ever have a big car collection, my top. 10, 15 first cars that I buy for a collection. I really, really, really like it. The other nice thing you get with these like kind of tribute cars to classic cars, especially with this, even with the SLS, it was like this. You drive around populated areas, you know, I'm in downtown Toronto right now and people aren't looking at you really, you're not getting attention, nobody knows what it is. So you, you can kind of go under the radar. You don't feel like you're being flashy, you're driving this thing around. You're driving it more for yourself than to show off. And I really like that. If people don't hate you, and the people that, that know what it is, love it and they freak out and they, and they know you're an actual car guy because if you're not a car guy and you don't know what this is, you're not gonna spend $300,000 on this. You're gonna go buy a Lamborghini Huracan to show off. So it just kind of shows that you're truly into cars. You're not buying this thing for clouds or anything like that. Just a low key cruiser for someone who's truly 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 likes the car otherwise you wouldn't be buying it but yeah that's it for my take on the bmw z8 i really like the car and who knows maybe slowly i'm becoming a bmw guy but this is a little bit different this is very special i'm shocked how much i like this car i had a great weekend with it and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video